Uh, welcome to this program. Uh, is the whole is this whole entire rally riding on next week? I, that's going to be a big part of it, right, as everybody is waiting to see what's going to be happening with the Fed. Uh, but at this point, I think a lot of that is really anticipated. The big debate right now is, are they going to be raising by 75 basis points, a full basis point? Um, but at this point in time, I think realistically, what's getting lost in this debate is you're starting to see a lot of signs that inflation over the longer term is likely going to be coming down. And I think that's what the markets are going to focus on is not next week what's happening, but six, 12 months from now, is inflation going to be a lot lower than it is today? And if the consumer is still in a good place, I think we can likely get through this period, hopefully without the large recession that I think a lot of people have been so worried about. So I don't know if the, this is kind of the end of this. I don't know if we're kind of quite out of the woods with all the selling we've seen in the markets. But I would say we're probably getting closer to the end of this. And I'm really optimistic about a second positive half of the year. Here. Wow. OK, so it, but it's all predicated, it sounds to me, uh, on a Fed pivot because inflation comes down enough over the, you know, I don't know, it's already halfway through the year over the few months ahead that you can still have a pretty constructive second half. I mean, it's got it's got to really head, hedge on them coming down at some point, which could happen, right, if inflation's coming down. But ultimately, if inflation's running at 9% a year continually and continually going up, at a certain point, that's going to become unsustainable for the consumer. But at this point, you even saw this with the bank earnings coming out. They're really showing that the consumer is still in a good position. They're still having healthy balance sheets. So, so far, they've been able to get through this. And if they can continue to do so and then inflation comes down, that would be a really positive sign. But yes, eventually, we've got to start to see those rates come down, which hopefully... Not next week, but later this year, we might hope to start to see some of that easing. I mean, you're you're speaking Jim Labenthal's language. He has a uh, I, I want to bring him into the conversation. He has a question for I mean, his his thesis is more positive than a lot of a, a lot of other uh, strategists, investors, money managers, et cetera. Yeah, no, I, Courtney, it's, uh, welcome to the show. It's nice to hear your thoughts. Uh, they do dovetail with my own. I'm curious, though, how you would be positioned or are positioned in the stock market to reflect your stance. Yeah, and I, I think you do still want to make sure that you're having the, the positions here that are going to be more cyclical, but especially, I think we've seen a lot of negativity towards some of your inflation hedges, but even if inflation is coming down, I don't think it's going to be quite at the levels that we've seen previously. So you do still want to have some of that in there. Um, like we are still looking at energy. We are still looking at some of your commodities, because I think ultimately some of that has been at least recently oversold here. I think you just want to make sure you're positioned and well cash and ca companies with good cash flow have some inflation hedges in there and especially companies that have good pricing power. I think that's still going to be really important right now. Mm. So if you look at the picks that you like, I mean, energy and commodities, that's where it goes. Uh, EQT is one of your picks. Tell us about it. Yes, which is, is the largest natural gas producer here in the U.S. And what I like about this is actually we've talked about oil previously, which I, I still like the energy trade. But um, EQT actually is a really good op opportunity because it's also going to be a little bit more recession resistant, right? Not that I'm of the camp we're in a pending recession, but if that does in fact happen, you tend to get a lot more demand towards your liquid natural gas because that's going to be using things like um, heating and electric power. Um, and longer term, there is a lot more of demand towards there because that is a lot cleaner than energy sources like coal. Um, so I think that's going to be a really good play that you can you can look take advantage of in this okay. environment. OK, uh, another, you know, Jim Labenthal theme here, uh, deer, <laughs> which uh, he is a, is a new ish buy for him. But why is it yours? Yeah, and I think what you've seen re recently with commodities prices coming up, and you've seen also a lot of the, the issues with your agriculture, like some of the trade wars and stuff have eased, and you have a really aging um, uh, equipment force in the uh, agriculture space. And so there's a lot of demand that's going to go towards new equipment with deer. And they're actually getting a lot more into not just selling each of these equipment, but also getting more into the service sector um, and having some like technology services that are adding on top of that, which I think is, is going to be a really good long-term, like multi-year cycle for them. All right. We'll see you soon. Courtney, thank you. That's Courtney Garcia. Thanks for having me. Joining us here.